But we would also, we're going to be about doing about 20 minutes of back and forth thing, and then we're going to ask you, encourage, we encourage you to ask questions from the audience, but we're not going to do this right away. So as they were saying on the last panel, right, the lobbying discussion in particular is difficult, and there's some issues in this industry that are persistent and have not been solved yet. And I think it's fair to say that everybody on this panel believes that in some way, some of the larger industry issues in part can be solved by technology or at least greatly aided. So I'm gonna throw this question out immediately. What and where do you think technology of whatever kind can help to continue revolutionizing this business? And if those of you guys don't know, like stores and Beckles, that's who's sitting next to me. So I'm going to throw it to you quickly because everybody knows your bank and you're international and etc. Yeah, thank you very much, Marita. Yes, my name is Jürgen Bickel from uh, Stolz & Bickel. We are producing uh, vaporizers. Uh, our first revolutionizing uh, technology was in the year 2000 when we brought up the volcano vaporizer on the market. Uh, before the time you had to smoke it, yeah, more or less, or to eat it, there was no other, uh, no other uh, viable way. So this was uh, uh, one uh, uh, revolution, but uh, what today is very normal, everybody knows vaporizer, there are tons of uh, products out there, so it become very mainstream. Uh, I believe the application form uh, will be uh, in the future more revolutionizing. We see all these concentrate vaporizers. Uh, it will go forward in this direction. We see alternatives like capsules, uh, what you can ingest. So I believe that the technology uh, will go forward. Can I just add a little plug here? I mean, vaping is seen as like the future, not just of the cannabis business, but a lot of other medications, a lot of other kinds of things, right? I mean. Yeah, in theory it's possible, yeah, whatever can, uh, but cannabis is a little bit special because of this decarboxylation process, THCA transformed into THC, uh, there must be other substances still found what can be uh, viable for that. So what about the rest of you? So, and please, you know, introduce your firm quickly. Where do you see technology helping to revolutionize the business? Is it sales? Is it tracking? Is it, you know, just knowing what you're doing? Where are the things that you guys see technology revolutionizing the business in? Thank you. That works. Hi, my name is Jeff Keen. I'm the CEO of a company called, or a product called uh, 365 Cannabis, but it's actually based on a, a Microsoft Dynamics platform, an ERP platform. So the way we feel we're going to help re revolutionize the space is actually taking something that works outside the industry and bring it in. So we're looking at the cannabis industry, like every other industry that's out there. I think the cannabis industry in markets like Canada and in the US started out thinking it was unique in every sense, but from a business process sense, it's like a lot of other business. It's agra, it's food process manufacturing, it's distribution, um, warehousing, and in the US and now starting to be in Canada is also, it's retail. So rather than look at it and say, how do I solve my problems in cannabis for those things, we're bringing a platform from outside that does all those things and applying it to the cannabis space. And then this term seed to sale that comes out there in, in the US and Canada where you're compliant. If you do all the right business processes and you set the system up properly, then you're automatically going to be compliant and you achieve your seed to sale that you hear so often in US, the US and Canada. Anybody else have some feedback here or? Yeah, absolutely. So hey, hello everyone. My name is uh, Zeta Seti. I'm the CEO of founder of Greenwich Consulting. Uh, the way that technology has actually revolutionized the industry in my eyes is that it's helped us scale, it's helped us automate, it's helped us accelerate. Uh, personally for me, uh, you know, I, I'm launching a software called Odyssey. Um, it's focused on licensing and permitting for cannabis businesses in the US. And uh, it's, it's really accelerated and scaled the process of being able to do that. Um, even though we can't fully automate it, and I think that you can equivalent to you can equate it to uh, something like um, you know the uh, TurboTax or legal zoom of the cannabis industry, and it's focused on a lot of the pre-license aspects of of getting these entrepreneurs licensed, getting them up and running. But I've seen everything and in my 25 years of doing this. I've seen everything from. Uh, you know, just uh, these these seed to sell tracking inventory control systems, all the way to like robots, AI, um, drones inside cultivation facilities that are spotting things like disease, pests, and controlling these 
and automating it. And so we're gonna see the same thing when it comes down to drop shipping medi medication eventually. So it's really interesting to see how technology is really taking this to the next level. Um, and I, I can't wait, we're, re we're really excited to see that. So, it, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump here for a second. So you see, and I agree with you, technology is helping to normalize as well as automate routine processes that have also in part slowed down this industry. Is that, is that fair to say? Absolutely. And we, we have yet to see some of the best out there. I mean, as we go through this innovation period, it's almost like a renaissance period of technology. Uh, we're seeing more and more and more come out every single day and everybody's just really taking it to the next level. So it's really exciting. Great. Um, so hello, my name is Manny. I'm the uh, Chief Product Officer and Interim CEO of uh, Namaste Technologies. We're a Canadian company, we're a fully vertically e integrated e-commerce platform. Uh, in Canada specifically, we have a sales-only license, which essentially forces us to be a pure play, a technology pure play company. We leverage technology to enable uh, optimization of the user experience, and we deliver solutions such as uh, education, telemedicine applications, the ability to purchase cannabis online, same-day delivery, journaling, etc. And we, we can talk about each one of these uh, technologies or siloed assets separately, but uh, my bias is, uh, and it's going to be very hyped, is around uh, artificial intelligence. And one of the things that we're focused on is to try and understand how we can leverage AI to help people find the right product for them. And I actually brought one of our lead machine learning engineers with me so that uh, everybody can harass him and see I'm not uh, just making stuff up. But uh, those, just like the fintech industry was really changed where you had people who are very, very passionate about what they're doing and understanding regulation and using technology to change that industry. And we still see that impact since 2009 till today. FinTech is still changing. Literally, we're in the infancy days of technology and cannabis combined. So, so I mean, MedPay, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's not meant to be an advertisement, you can come to our booth, but we're using blockchain. And we're actually, I mean, no matter what the technology is, I think here, whether it's hardware or software, there are ways to use existing technology to automate processes, there are ways to use new technology to push the envelope. There's a whole bunch of innovation that's coming out. But one of the things also that struck me about this panel was how international it is. Right? So you have people here with international experience and technology certainly across oceans is different. And a lot of us are looking at the compliance space one way or another. How about, just shout out, where, are, where do you think the international cannabis industry in some ways has started to reform or put pressure on or change the cannabis industry in other places? And how does this industry now being international play into the revolution, revolutionizing idea of tech and its application? Where do you see that happening? Yeah, I am, we have the, the last 12 months we distributed into 90 countries around the world. So it's very international and it's uh, everywhere available. Uh, and of course, with this technology, you have then the way how you can uh, consume cannabis in a medical way. You have then um, an app with it. You can uh, track uh, uh, all that. And so it's, uh, the technology is really uh, nowadays distributed uh, worldwide in a very uh, fast way. But is compliance different from country to country, right? Yeah, exactly. Of course, we are a European country. Uh, we are here a medical device manufacturer. A medical device manufacturer means that uh, he needs to be uh, have a quality management system. There, it's called traceability. What is called seed to sale. On the other hand, on a device and this traceability, if you get back a, a, a defective device with a serial number, you must be able to track back where you purchased every single part you built in and where you have it sold to. So um, um, the other requirements are, are relatively high and they are different from country to country. For example, we don't have a medical device in the USA because the FDA is not ready to approve a medical device. Then if you go to Israel, you have, of course, other, uh, other requirements. Labeling in Hebrew and Arabic can also be a little bit challenging, uh, um, stuff like that. And the latest uh, compliance thing we got is the uh, GDPR, uh, the General uh, Directive for um, uh, the SGVO, the Anschutzgrundverordnung. Privacy. Uh, yeah, yeah, privacy law. So uh, this gives you uh, also another compliance uh, thing. What I think uh, from people from uh, North America, they are not 
uh, ready for the GDPR as far as I can <laughs> as I can see. Uh, of course, the law is less than a year old, but it's a really uh, it's a strict law and it's a, a, a really a highly punished uh, law and it will be followed. It so I think it will also affect a lot of people who touch Europe in any in any way with their products. Uh, there is some compliance coming up. I'll, I'll take the next one. It's an interesting question on compliance because. So we do business in Canada, US, and there's a number of international companies in Colombia, Jamaica, Australia, Denmark, that we're dealing with right now in the cannabis industry. But the platform is already international. So if you look at the platform we're using for ERP, is already almost in every country in the world, including Germany, just not in, in the cannabis space. So the Canadians, when they came into the space with their LPs, and we came in a few years afterwards, we saw the legacy of this was they, their compliance to them was just, am I compliant to, to Health Canada and I'm meeting the regulations so I can keep my license? And they didn't think about compliance in any other way. So now all of a sudden the Canadians are coming to us and, and asking us for GMP. Uh, first of all, I think they probably had to look up the, the acronym as most of us do, good manufacturing process, which in order to export your product from Canada to countries like Germany, you have to prove that you are a GMP uh, processing facility. And, and the Canadians weren't thinking of that at all. So it's, I think in some ways, the international space has a, has a way to benefit from what was already learned in the US and, Can and, and Canada, not do the same things, look at it as a business that has to be compliant as a, as, as, versus a compliant industry specific to cannabis that has to run a business and there's compliance everywhere. GDPR, GMP, FDA requirements are not in the US yet, but they're coming. So all these things have to be in place. They're public companies now trading, so now SOX compliance and how your financial reporting goes. So we actually had to employ, which I didn't think I'd ever have to do running a software company, is hire a compliance chief officer just for us to handle not only what's going on in cannabis, but also the compliance that's coming at us from everywhere else. I'm going to push this one to you, right? So it's a, it's a discussion about what can technology do to revolutionize the industry. I think sales and advertising is certainly there. Right. However controversial, and I wanted to throw it in that direction because, you know, the questions about how technology can be applied to overcome some of the bigger issues, whether it's compliance or laws or etc. Certainly, sales online, the discussion of the industry press online, 2014 helped push forward a whole bunch of things. How do you see this working? How do you see this technology discussion changing regulatory frameworks that are still holding the industry back, like advertising or etc. So, so that, that's a very important point to remember, that everybody's very afraid of compliance, GDPR, and they're very worried about, oh, what are we going to do with it? But essentially, if you look at it, it could be a huge opportunity because the existence of GDPR raises the bar and allows you, if you build systems in place to comply with that, allows you to create moats around your business. So for example, um, part of GDPR, and, and, and I'll get to the advertising and sales point in a moment, part of GDPR is, is security by design or segregating data, not collecting data that you shouldn't if you don't need it for true processing. So for example, one of the things with uh, automatic processing of data is that it's not exposed to humans. So you can segregate it within the system and then you're protected from a compliance perspective. You can automate a lot of the uh, requirements that GDPR has and then you create those modes around the business and, and you use that as an opportunity. Specifically around uh, sales and marketing, that's really interesting because I spent the morning talking with a lot of uh, CBD uh, producers and, and suppliers here and the one thing that everybody spoke about is like we cannot advertise we cannot sell our, our products online or so we cannot advertise our products online even there was a panel previously that spoke about the exact same point and CBD let's take it as an example in many countries many countries is completely legal however the big advertising networks like Google and Facebook AdSense DoubleClick etc those are the ones that don't allow you to advertise and so guess what happened to Google and GDPR in France? Yeah. <laughs> That's just a discussion. So I, I just want to come back to you, though, because I think your system actually helps people comply by automating it literally by using the legal form. So you're kind of combining those two. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, or? sure. I mean, you know, just as you were stating about, you know, the different countries that have different laws or that are just coming online or becoming aware and educated, 
Um, just in the state of California alone, it's like that. It's like the whole world, or all the world's policies in one state. So as we go from city to county to the state level, it's all different. Just like you go throughout the United States, it's all different. So we've had to find a way to kind of jump that based on best practices. Uh, we know that the FDA is gonna step in eventually, just like you have. Um, you should always be focused on good manufacturing practices or good business practices. That's a very important factor when you're coming in and exporting to the EU you as well because if you're not compliant then you're not going to be able to serve that market um, I think that uh, when it comes down to it when it comes down to technology let me ask real quick how many people in this room right now are in a startup mode for a, a tech uh, company or are in a tech company right now how many people anybody great awesome so we are not limited is what I'm saying. And with technology, you can license that technology, you can take that technology to other countries. You're not limited like cannabis is limited. Um, and for the fact that we are you know, a technology firm, we're able to actually serve more markets than our counterparts who are in the cannabis industry trying to get licensed to sell cannabis. And that's, that's the, the thing that we always need to compare that to, in my opinion, you said license the technology to others, is AWS, right? AWS yeah, yeah. started as an internal solution for Amazon because they couldn't find something that met their needs. And now it grew to a $10 billion a year business because they, every, who here doesn't use or uses AWS in their business, right? So, so, I, think we, so I think we can all agree, right, that, that in some ways, technology is revolutionizing the industry because it's normalizing it. It's saying this is just a commodity or et cetera. So, but as a way of a lead in, I saw a lot of hands go up. There are a lot of people in startups and we would like to now open the, you know, the, the field for, oper for questions. So if you have questions, please go ahead and bounce them back to us because one of the things we were talking about a bit before we came on here is I think I'm one of the few people actually who's gone through the German incubation system. There are opportunities if you are starting to look at applying technology and want to apply technology in this revolutionary business where you can start to enter the market in new and different ways, in part by normalizing that, in part by saying, I'm not just dealing with cannabis as this crazy plant, I'm dealing with a narcotic that has to be, that's an off-label drug that has to be approved or et cetera, or I have to track a plant for da da da. So I think, how would you say that, and, and you're gonna, I'm gonna pick on you again, how would you say that technology has changed the equation in terms of no normalization, if that makes any sense. I mean, for example, you have to get, you have to go through insurance approvals as a medical equipment provider. You're the, the only person on stage who has to go through that. So technology is also adding a different level of compliance to you as well. Is that revolutionary to you, for example? Yeah, um, as a medical device manufacturer, of course, there are, there are a lot of medical devices, so it's not so important if it is for cannabis or for something else. You need to follow the medical device rules, and they are there, and if you comply, you comply, and there's also no reason then to decline uh, any allowance to it. On the insurance side, yeah, we have tried to get here in Germany, uh, uh, generally recovered, to get on, uh, there's a list, a uh, Hilfsmittel list there. Uh, where you can get on, then you get a, then the doctor can prescribe it and the patient get it reimbursed. Uh, but unfortunately, we have not reached to get on this uh, list yet. There are still uh, too many hurdles, uh, and they are still unsure, and they fear that they are, uh, get a lot of prescription for it. Uh, but on, that we are working for, and hopefully soon we will we will have to. We are on that list. We can work together on that question. So, so any of, I mean, I think, for example. You, for example, are actually in a licensing and processing approval discussion, correct? Yes, correct. I mean, you know, essentially, again, it comes back to the regulations at the state level in the U.S., um, in this case in, in, in Germany or other areas, if they were to do licensing. It would be at the, at the obviously the government level. So we what we do is we sort of analyze when when regulations come out. You know, regulations are shifting and changing. There's is, is dynamic compliance. I like to call it really because every, this whole space is very dynamic. So uh, when it comes down to it, we have to really navigate these processes. But if we can accelerate it and lower the barrier of entry and you know, promote more diversity and bring more players into this game, you know, and really get it to the point where folks can really innovate, we are going to see a hyper jump in that space in, in terms of technology, in terms of how, uh, you know, folks actually operate. And so we want to ensure that 
uh, first that you guys get permitted and, regula and regulated and licensed, and then there's ongoing compliance partners that handle everything else because everybody's focused on that section as opposed to the pre-licensed section. So that's where our focus is. But again, coming back to technology and how it's changing the face of the landscape, there's things like the internet of things, for instance, IoT. We're, we're seeing IoT uh, manage like how the plant's growing, you know, checking, you just know there's like full automation on this. Right? And so as a business owner that's trying to scale and serve a high demand in this marketplace, things like that are, are pretty important. I mean, it lowers the, the cost associated with it. Uh, we're able to really magnify the ability to grow this plant exactly the same way over and over again, which is consistency. So we have a fractured supply chain, not only on the global level, but on, you know, just to base in the US or just based in the state of California, it's still a fractured supply chain. So we're not able to get um, the same consistency of products um, because businesses are scaling, and this is a, a plant that changes its its uh, you know its consistency over the course of time as you scale it or add different nutrients or add different lighting or add different management techniques on the plant. So it's really interesting to see how technology is shaping that. Um, but most importantly, is that. It's just innovation is going to this isn't never stop. It's going to happen over and over and over again, just like with the internet when it first came out. So uh, I like to compare it to that because that's how fast this thing is moving, right? And so I would highly, I would highly recommend taking advantage of that. Absolutely. So, so I'm going to throw this out. Is there anybody with questions right now who wants to ask the panel anything? We're going to keep going. Okay. So you wanted? To, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think you had a specific issue that you wanted to bring up in terms of. I think that you were sort of talking about the fact that to try to take it to the next level that of all of us in some ways from a technology panel or a technology solution. Well, just uh, just generally lessons learned, right? Coming, coming exactly. With, coming 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 with it from a platform that already works in other industries and coming into the cannabis space into North America. First of all, the international space has a once in a lifetime opportunity to set their business up from the ground up. Not only because cannabis is new, but the businesses are new, and setting it up the right way with technology and making some of the right decisions. Most most U.S. companies that are in the space have probably gone through two, three, four different iterations of solutions. Whatever they tried in the beginning didn't work. They're now on to you know multiple others. And and from our standpoint, this is where we're now coming in from the outside, saying you're in agriculture, you grow in greenhouses. People have been growing in greenhouses for decades, hundreds of years, and there's already software out there that does that for you. So why are you trying to apply brand new software to something that's already established out there? So we're kind of coming at it from a different way, saying you're in supply chain management that does agriculture, that does food process manufacturing, distribution, and potentially retail. So for us, we're not looking at it having to introduce something brand new because the space requires it. We're trying to normalize it by saying it already exists out there. Don't go make the same mistakes that the others did where you're buying software from the ground up that isn't proven anywhere yet, but just trying to find itself in the cannabis space because it's going to get outscaled. As you normalize the business out there, all those other things start to hit you, the normal business processes that every other business runs in. In the end, you're, you're here to make money on these businesses. It's not just about you're in the cannabis industry and what software will work for that. Well, see, and, and, and this is where I'm hoping to introduce a little bit of you know controversy here. So, you know, obviously, your MedPay is using a new technology called blockchain, right? And how do you integrate that into a new industry while minimizing risks and attacking the issues that you're attacking? Well, one of the ways that we have decided to go forward on this is actually blending this. So we're holding workshops where we're bringing stakeholders together who aren't necessarily tech geeks, but they're business people with problems. And they're coming together and they're discussing them. And that is how we're starting to, I think, also start to pin new technology processes and re-engineering into a new business, which it very much is here as much as we are, I guess, re-engineering processes. So I think that this, for us, the cannabis vertical has given us a way to address a larger problem that is faced, for example, by the chronically ill, people who need to get expensive medical equipment, pharmacies, people who are touching this ecosystem but didn't necessarily have another way to touch it. But, but I'm gonna throw something also out here because everyone's talking about this, the whole, enabling as aspect or not enabling aspect, especially when you throw in privacy and all the other issues about online sales, right? Because online discussion about this industry, I think has very much led to greater legalization as much as governments have not maybe gotten the regulation right so far. But clearly I think the online discussion and technology does lead to online sales. Would anybody like to take a, <clears throat> 
dive into that as, and also from the, the enabling and also the privacy perspective. Does anyone? Have... Yeah, I can, I can talk about the, the online aspect of it. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, that's where the industry or all businesses are going to, right? Because as humans, we are lazy. We want the path of least resistance. So if I'm able to sit at home, and if we look at the full stack of the cannabis uh, industry, if I'm able to get a prescription without leaving my house, and then buy a volcano without leaving my house and have it delivered, I will likely prefer it over having to leave, get in my car, drive through snow, see a doctor, get, go to a pharmacy, pick up the product, etc. So from, in regards to e-commerce, right? obviously I'm, I'm quite biased, so I can continue talking about that aspect for, for a while, but it is something that is driving this industry forward. Well, let me let me be a devil advocate. Is it is it e-commerce or is it telemedicine? I mean, I think that there are two aspects. There's, there's the telemedicine. There's the e-commerce. There's the do pe do people feel comfortable not seeing a doctor? Are regulatory agencies, particularly when you get into the narcotics side of this, going to say, yeah, the years are scheduled two, and you don't have to come and see a doctor anymore? Is that realistic yeah, in, you, Germany, you, in, in Germany, Jurgen? In Germany, today I read that you can get. Uh, uh, then you can get online to a doctor and you can claim to be ill uh, for your business and you get your, uh, this is a new system who is available here but it's very controversial. And the doctor doesn't get paid yet by the way, so you know, there's, there's some issues there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe um, another general remark about compliance, because it was here about fearing compliance. Or um, I, I think it's very important to be compliant. And still, I think every managing director, CEO, uh, must take care to be compliant, and especially in this uh, field, because on the one hand, you don't want to get extra hurdles because you are treating something with cannabis, but on the other, on the other hand, you also do not want to get uh, to be very favored because it's cannabis, and think you can, you don't need to be compliant because it's cannabis. Both sides you don't want to see, you want to see, you don't want to get extra hurdles, but you also want uh, not to get uh, uh, any, any easy way on, on something. What, let's move a bit, a bit on compliance, because I think technology can also use, can be used for research, right? And, and sort of the big data, data gathering aspects, I think, of basically all of what we've decided. I mean, I think what's interesting about you guys is you're moving more and more into a world where you can gather information online. For example, through the vape, I would assume, right? I don't want to say, that. but but regardless, I mean, there is there's definitely this whole discussion now about digital health in the cloud and privacy issues. How would you? Do, are you want to touch on that one? Or, or yeah, we we actually uh, built. Uh, let's let's start with the problem, right? The problem is that a lot of people use cannabis, but there is no way for them to actually measure if it's helping them or not. So there are. Not a lot, but quite a few companies that build solutions uh, to address that. We are one of them. There's a great company that, that, that is out here today, Strain Print, that does the same thing. It essentially allows people to track usage and the impact of products on their symptoms. And initially, at least us, when we released this, we are like, no one's ever going to give us any data. And we were very surprised to see that actually people were very forthcoming. With they weren't data. Germans though, were they, right? No. There might be Germans, right? But the people were very, very forthcoming with the data because there was a lot of value that was created in exchange for that data. To, so that's something that is, is actually moving forward. And the idea of being able to collect real data from real people and analyze it and generate insights has value across the entire industry, one for patients, for example, we're able to recommend what strains are right or wrong for them. For the industry, we're able to help growers understand what's popular, what they need to grow because of grow cycles. For device manufacturers, they can understand uh, what temperatures people are using, uh, is it uh, conduction, convection based, what are the most popular models, etc. There is so many different elements that can be used that are valuable for both parts of the industry. So. It's something that so, so, because like, we're trying to involve you. So, hands up, how many people involved here in the startup side are using technology in education? Hands up. How many? How many are using it in compliance? How many are using it for medical processing? Okay, anybody else who wants to speak up? I mean, we really are trying to encourage technology companies to come forward and talk about their experiences because we can all learn from each other. I mean, I will say that my experience here has been actually to sort of use some of the stigma around this plant to actually get people to agree to start to use new technology. 
for example. I mean, if, if, if people agree, well, yeah, this is a narcotic, and yes, we need to track it, and no, we can't really do this because GDPR says we can't follow this, etc. I think that that does also create a new opportunity to apply new technology in a new way to fix problems that are affecting this industry as it normalizes and potentially other pieces of a larger vertical. Have any of you had experiences with that that you would like to talk to? Yeah, well, actually, I'd like to uh, come back to, you know, what you stated about how there's nothing new here, guys. I mean, like, at the end of the day, the tech, there's technology out there. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about making that wheel way much better, way better than what it is. Because here's the thing, like, the technology we developed, it was really kind of out of multiple different pieces. We took the best of several different pieces of technology that worked in our field um, and infused it together into something that's brand spanking new. Right, and, and the same thing goes for a lot of these different factors. It's like you don't need to create anything new, um, even unless it's something that has to be created new. So I encourage you guys to look out there and see and do a lot of research because before you spend all this money or your investors' money for that matter on a lot of different things that you that is already existing, just do a lot of research first because there's a lot of things out there that already serve that purpose. We're seeing a merge of all these different industries merge into the cannabis industry um, from all different fields. That includes uh, you know medicine, that includes um, technology, that includes agriculture, that includes retail, that includes supply chain tracking, that includes all all different logistics and transportation. I mean, there's so many different things happening globally that you just gotta take from all those different industries and then apply your own kind of sort of style to it, right? And I also wanna, um, you know, real quickly, you know, talk, talk about this whole telemedicine aspect of this or just working with patients and gathering that data. Um, you know, I have a, a friend of mine, his name's Dr. Len May. Um, he's based on Los Angeles and he runs a, a company called Endocana Health. Now what Endocana Health does is they take your 23andMe data and translate it the information into what you need for you, what would work best for you in terms of cannabis products, right? Um, what would work worse for you in terms of causing stress or anxiety or different things like that. Really, really cool technology. Um, but this way you're able to get highly targeted patient data um, that's, that's, that's really amazing. And so you know exactly what works for you because what will work for one person may not work for the other person. Right, so it's Can really I, important to see that. It's pretty incredible. And I'm gonna jump into here, right? So, so the difference in privacy, the approach to privacy from a technology perspective is very, very different depending on where you are. I mean, if you're in California, home of Google, um, and we don't care about privacy, and I'm gonna say that because I just got a suit here in, in, in France. They don't, and I, you know, I think that there is a wide opportunity here, but I think that that is one of the issues that we see, is that privacy and the understanding of what privacy is of where that data can go and who can have access to that and why is a discussion that I think the cannabis industry in general and patients and doctors should step up on. I mean, we're, we're in that space. We don't believe that private companies should have as much information about people as they do. And we see GDPR, to your point, I think, as a way of setting a much higher standard where patients actually have control where they don't. And that in itself is something that we can enable with the use of technology while giving industry more information than they ever possibly could have hoped for, but it is completely anonymized because of the way that we approach it. So maybe that is one of the ways to talk, maybe we can talk about a, a bit about privacy, because I think this is a huge, huge discussion that is not often talked about because people are like, GDPR, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect my business. In, in Germany or in Europe right now, a GDPR violation, one GDPR violation, they can ding you 4% of global sales. So if you think about just the cannabis perspective of this, beyond the fact that privacy as, as a medical discussion should be baked into all of us, this particularly can hurt a company who has small medical sales here in Germany, but a global footprint, for example. So how do you think that, and I'm gonna I think maybe end this a little bit early because I wanna speed things up and make sure this conference moves on, but how do you see technology influencing the privacy conversation? And I, I would say if you wanna add in the cannabis industry, fine, but I think that technology can be used to highlight. So for example, you're going, you know, are, are you making plans to give people their own personal cloud access, for example? Or you know, in your industry, are you thinking about the fact that yeah, I've got a, you know, is, are there privacy aspects on the, on, the, on the B2B side that maybe we haven't thought about? I mean, I think that is, from my perspective, I mean, that is where I spend a lot of my time thinking and planning and working, but 
I didn't well, know. Uh, just jump in there, because I mean, what you just said is so complex depending on where you are. Um, so we, we conduct business in the US. There's over 30 states that we're having to deal with. Um, if you know, we deal with Canada, we, we, the data that we take from our customers is not our data. It's a, it, we put it into Azure, it's your environment and our model. So the data is yours, we just have to help you manage it. And in Canada, the data has to stay inside of Canada. Uh, so you have to, as a technology company, we have to put platforms up everywhere that comply to that requirement that really has nothing to do with cannabis, has more to do with, with the data side of it. So privacy relates to the consumer, but it also relates to your data. Everybody's coming to us looking for aggregated data on your business, not just from what you're selling to patients, but you know what products are selling. Every other industry has aggregated data that they're looking at. If you, and if you come from the hotel industry, every hotel knows how busy this hotel was last night, what the occupancy was here as it compares to everybody else and what the average room rate was. And this industry needs to know the same thing. What products should I be selling? Uh, how, much, how much does it cost me to produce that product? How can I be more efficient? And you have to share the aggregated data as a community so that we, we can all get better at it. So there, then there's the privacy of that information. So we, we don't give that data out. That has to be you guys providing that data amongst yourselves and then a community setting itself up where that ag aggregated data gets used. <laughs> okay, so I think we're being signaled from the side here that we're running out of time. Last call for any questions. You can catch us later. Oh, it, there it is, good. Um, I'm Salah from um, Clever Botanics. Um, conversation is very interesting because um, we, we launched our online shop in the UK, but the plan was to produce two apps, one for Android, one for uh, iOS, and connect the Shopify into the app. So when we sell a product, we want to capture the information from the customer, how they used it, and how it can help uh, for us to choose the next, next product. Uh, but the GD, GDPR thing you talked about is very interesting because uh, we're already starting to sell, not just in the UK, but Germany and France. And how do we <laughs> sort of manage that is, is a, a thing that I have no idea. I wonder whether you have any Come talk, come talk to us yeah. later, but sure. Yeah, I, I think of the, the, the rule is uh, privacy by default or privacy by design. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have uh, the tracking you have uh, needs to be disabled, uh, but you are able to ask uh, uh, your client that he shares the information with you. It's still possible. You just need to say why you want uh, want the data be collected, what kind of data you want to collect it, and you need to ask for permission. And you can do the same thing. But and patients can ask for it back too. That's the other thing, right? So it is common. Yeah, it's, it's, it, GDPR sounds scary, but it's quite simple. As long as you get consent, and there is a reason for you to have that consent, which sounds like you want to provide better service to your customers, just build your privacy policy in a way that gets that consent, and then you can do pretty much whatever you want, as long as you define yourself as the data controller in that matter. Short answer is complicated. Any other questions? And see us later, too. That there's someone there. I have a quick question. When you talk about AI and all these things, how do you deal with... Uh, implicit biases or the challenges you have of gathering quality information because you can make the smartest machine but if you tell it dumb shit it's gonna be a dumb shit good question like you know garbage in garbage out yeah, I think that's exactly. right that's the, the same issue. basic right the expert evidence in the Vancouver dispensary case was that patients want to uh, see the product smell the product uh, like going to the grocery store and buying your groceries so how do you deal with that? Um, you have a license to sell online. Canada only allows that. I think you and Shoppers Drug Mart are the yep. only ones who have it. Uh, medical patients only get it in the mail, and they complain that it's in the container. They have to open it up. Sometimes there's some problem with it. They send it back, so it delays them getting their medicine. So the, the evidence from the patients and an expert, uh, Dr. Zerberkus from the States, uh, was that this was a very important part of delivering medical uh, for medical patients. So I'm not sure if the drone can come and drop down and give an option and go back up and you can pick or how you're going to deal with that technology. Well, yeah, actually, so. in, in, I'm sorry to interrupt, but in Germany, actually, that's illegal. So you have to go to the pharmacy and the medical, I guess, uh, culture here. I mean, the, the apothecas are trained to actually, I mean, that's why they want patients to go to the pharmacy, to literally have the pharmacist who is trained in this hand over that drug. But to your point, 
they, there may be regulatory issues that say you can't do it as you're doing in Canada, which affects other things, seas to sail, for example. But then you're going to also, in, in terms of access issues, if you're too sick to get to the pharmacy. But those are places where technology can, in fact, begin to start to connect them. But as we find, privacy issues all are all the way along this because it's not just a product that you can buy like a regular commodity product. This is still stigmatized. So privacy is in the room at every single point. Well, actually, I think it's going to be based on preference. I mean, if you prefer to have a drop ship to your front door, then okay, but that'll never replace the retail experience of you going in there and smelling different things. The only thing it will do is enhance it, right? So we're seeing enhancement of that retail experience. So, and Vancouver is a lot different than Germany. Well, and that's the evolution from medical to rent that we're seeing as well. Correct. So, if you're coming from a North American perspective, you're already going, well, isn't it just like alcohol? And why can't you buy it and consume it like you do alcohol? And internationally, we're still talking about it medically. And what is it? And is it a medicine? Is it you pick it up in a pharmacy? Can you get it online? So I think if you look forward a few years, you're going to see that same change happen that's happening in North America as it tries to embrace it in a recreational adult use way and have a retail experience around it. Yeah, but you know what's interesting about Canada, I'm sorry to judge it, but in Canada it seems like the privacy aspect was not really brought up until it went into the recreational market, which is an interesting twist, I thought, anyway. But, but that question in regards to brick and mortar versus e-commerce e is, we shouldn't even be talking about it, right? It's the same question that was 30 years ago in regards to, or 20 years ago in regards to e-commerce in general. And now you see e-commerce e growing endlessly and malls in the US yeah, but GDPR, well, GDPR but wait, is also it has nothing to do with privacy. He was talking about the consumer experience of choosing a product without being able to touch, smell, and understand it. And that's a classic question of, of e-commerce. But, you know, weed is different, and we're going to go a little long because I'm getting passionate now. Weed is different than lumber or a blender, right? You don't have to smell a blender. You don't need to look at the crystals on a blender, yeah. right? You want to smell your weed. You want to look at it. You maybe want to talk to the person about the genetics and you want to know something about the grower and how it was grown and all so these other all, things and all it's completely that, different. All of that can don't be always get that experience. No, but that's a, mature, that's a maturity of the industry, right? Because right now, I think that's because inconsistent product might be coming through and you can't get the same experience Listen, each time. you can give five different growers the same cut and come up with five different styles and five different smells and five different effects all from the same weed. So it's really hard to, you can get it's that not from a an IPA or a double buck or whatever. It's very hard to get different, to make sure people are consistent. The blue dream from one person is different than blue dream from another person. And, and it's and not generic the, like that. And here's the other thing, right? So, I mean, I know that this discussion is saying that there's no, pri or fewer privacy discussions in e-commerce, but there are actually a lot. Is there a question? There was another question. Uh, I think, what time is it though? Because we're running super late. 